Hello and welcome everyone. So today we are going to discuss soil liquefaction, which has proven itself a major challenge to the multi-story buildings as well as mega structures. Because in this phenomena, the entire properties of the soil gets changed from a solid state to a state of semi-solid or semi-liquid or even liquid. So that's why it is named as soil getting liquefied. So that's why it's called as soil liquefaction. See what happens, uh, soil liquefaction is majorly caused by the ground shaking. Ground shaking which is the effect of the earthquake. Okay. Now when ground shakes then soil gets liquefied if it can be liquefied. Then what happens the soil loses its strength and the building made over it gets entirely failed because the failure of foundation there are several examples of building which have failed not because of some structural uh, defects or design defects they merits but because the soil below the structure has somewhere or other a potential to be liquefied and the uh, structure uh, as if it floated and it just overturned okay it couldn't take any amount of CR stress because the liquids or the fluid they are completely weak in taking CR stress. I hope you understand this in comparison to the solid. So that's why there are example of overturning of buildings, especially in the China. There are 20 story buildings getting overturned because of liquefaction of soil only. And another effect is differential settlements of the buildings, just like Leaning Tower of Pisa one side is leaning one side has settled more than the other side so that's maybe because of soil liquefaction and uh, one more example that is coming in my mind that is a temple dedicated to lord siva near the uh, mother ganges uh, in banaras and that has even much more differential settlement than that leaning tower of pisa it has almost 18 20 degree and even pujari goes there and do the uh, worship and the rituals so the soil liquefaction has always been a challenge and uh, today we are going to see the same process phenomena here how does this happens okay what is the main reason behind the liquefaction as i said it's the ground shaking okay and ground shaking is one of the major effect due to earthquake okay and what are the zones liquefaction zones those zones which are much more potential or vulnerable for getting liquefied and what are the effects of liquefaction what happens when the soil liquefaction happens what is quicksand condition then as quicksand condition is also known as soil boiling but this is not because of uh, earthquake okay it's not an earthquake effect but yeah, in some cases, quicksand condition can happen because of earthquake, but not always. Then finally, we will discuss nearly conclusion how to mitigate the effects of soil liquefaction. So starting the introduction here, it's a phenomena. Soil liquefaction is a process that mostly happens in saturated soil or partially saturated soil. As I said, in soil liquefaction, a soil gets liquefied so naturally the liquid cannot take CR stress so uh, there is substantial loss in strength and stiffness in response to an applied stress applied stress comes from the superstructure to the substructure and from the substructure to the soil so usually earthquake shaking or other sudden changes in the stress condition earthquake shaking or the ground shaking is so much violent like that in within few seconds there is so much application of heavy stress that uh, there is a, a sudden change in a stress condition in the soil and we can't imagine how much load is applied on the soil from the building especially the multi-story buildings there is a huge amount of stress and the more the mass of the building is there to that proportion of seismic base shear is there due to earthquake okay as we have discussed seismic base shear is there and this base shear uh, is mainly caused by the 
earthquake earthquake forces are lateral okay just like bend load is lateral load similarly earthquake load is a lateral load and the nature of this earthquake load is that it's maximum at the bottom and minimum at the top okay whereas the wind load is minimum at the bottom and maximum at the top okay so earthquake base shear is maximum at the bottom maximum at the foundation and it's directly proportional to the mass of the building if you discuss if you have done the numericals on earthquake resistant design we have done that so that's why this change in stress condition what cause it it causes that the soil becomes almost a liquid now how does it happen we will discuss and this process is called soil liquefaction okay so in this process soil suddenly loses strength most commonly as a result of ground shaking during a large earthquake okay now liquefaction occurs in saturated soil and sub saturated soil or partially saturated soil okay so saturated soils are those soils in which the space between the individual particle is completely filled with water so you can see the image of fully saturated uh, soil sediment entire hole entire pores between the particles is completely filled up by what water so this water exists exerts what a pore water pressure on the soil particles it exerts the water exerts a pressure on the soil particles and we know that effective stress sigma effective is equal to sigma total minus pwp okay so this is the formula so this uh, water uh, filled in the pores apply some pressure on the grains soil grains and this uh, water pressure is however relatively low before the occurrence of an earthquake okay you can see the water is filling in the pore space between the grains and friction between the grains now these grains are being held together due to the frictional forces now frictional forces uh, are the examples of contact forces so they are almost normal perpendicular to the surface of uh, touch between the two particles now friction when we say friction friction is norm directly proportional to normal forces and normal forces is directly proportional to the load uh, basically the vertical load that is uh, applied over it okay weight so this is the relationship and but when uh, what happens in case of soil liquefaction during soil liquefaction the water completely surrounds all the soil grains and eliminates all the contact forces that is holding the grain and it uh, loses all the grains loses its contact and they starts floating in the water and the sediment the soil sediment flows like a fluid so that's why it is called as soil getting liquefied or soil liquefaction so this is the process of soil liquefaction explained here and here we have to recognize the condition that exists in a soil deposit before an earthquake soil is what it's a basically an assemblage of many soil particles which stay in contact with many neighboring soil okay and the contact forces basically the frictional forces produced by the weight of the overlying particle as i said frictional forces are proportional to the normal forces and that is proportional to the weight of the overlying overlying particles okay this is clear uh, so this uh, contact forces holds individual soil particles in its place and it provide strength to the soil but during liquefaction it's a result of rapid load application during earthquake what happens there is a rapid load application as i said the earthquake forces are the vertical uh, seismic base shear have a, has a large magnitude so there is a rapid load application in the horizontal direction lateral direction and due to this there are breakdown of the loose and saturated sand just like what happens 
if you have uh, some if you have a sieve saver sieve saker i hope you have seen this equipment in sieve saker what happens we generally do the distribution of the soil particles so you sake the sieves then what happens the loose and loose particles comes down okay and the uh, as you go down you will find more denser configuration so the soil moves from the looser configuration or less dense region to the more denser region okay so similarly during ground shaking during ground shaking what happens the loose and the saturated sand or the loosely packed individual soil particles they are shaked and they also try to move in a denser configuration okay and uh, since there is not enough time because earthquake is uh, for hardly for even for few seconds so there is not enough time for the pore water of the soil to be released or uh, squeezed out in case of an earthquake so in that case water is trapped the uh, in the soil particles between the soil particle pores of the soil particles and that water prevents the soil particle no i can't expand any more as you are expanding so they uh, prevents the soil particles from moving closer together because they have completely filled so since uh, the then what happens there is an increase in water pressure now due to increase in water pressure and it cannot be released it reduces the contact forces between the individual soil particles and that causes softening and weakening of soil deposit and what happens in extreme condition the soil particle may lose contact with each other due to the increased pore water pressure because the pore water pressure is increasing here okay and the contact forces will get loose here so in the in such cases soil will have very little strength and will behave more like a liquid more like a liquid than a solid hence the name is given here as liquefaction so the amount of sigma effective will decrease sigma effective will go down because pore water pressure is increasing and the soil will almost becomes like a liquid okay so what are the criteria what are the re uh, what are the major criteria which even which uh, supports a soil which makes a soil vulnerable or susceptible to liquefaction these are the four basic criteria okay historical criteria composition criteria geological criteria and state criteria so historical criteria as we can see if someone is showing some uh, habit in past then it can be predicted that it will show the similar effect in the future also it's historical criteria or a habitual criteria all right so observations from earlier earthquake can provide a great deal of information about the liquefaction susceptibility of certain types of soils and sites so the soils that have liquefied in the past can liquefy again in future earthquakes so it's a habitual criteria okay second criteria is the composition criteria okay so the soil which are composed of particles that are all or almost all the particles are uniform as well as round so they are much more susceptible to lose the contact forces because in case of uniformity or roundness what happens there is less contact surf there is less contact area you understand when the soil particles are like this and this so in this case and in this case which one will have higher friction higher contact force of course this will have higher contact force this will have lower contact force this will have higher contact area this will have lower contact area so similar same thing is uh, explained here in the composition criteria that soil composed of particles that are all about the same size are more susceptible to li soil liquefaction than the soil with a wide range of particle size as i explained to you 
and specifically soil deposits with rounded particles are even much more susceptible to soil liquefaction all right third criteria is the geological criteria and it's basically the formation of soil involved in it so specifically the sedimented sediment station if it has happened if it is the cause of geological formation of the soil then that is also again because sedimentation means uh, there are layers there are layers and uh, we don't know which layer can be liquefied easily and these layers are almost uh, susceptible to float over one another okay so specifically the saturated soil deposits that have been created by sedimentation process in rivers and lakes are susceptible to soil liquefaction or the if the sedimentation has happened by the wind action they are also or the deposition of debris or eroded material soil erosion anyway anything like that so if the geological formation of the soil is because of sedimentation they are again susceptible to this uh, soil liquefaction and fourth criteria is the state criteria state criteria uh, means that what is the initial state of a soil what is the initial state of a soil and uh, that is defined basically by the density and the effective stress at the time it is subjected to rapid loading when earthquake came at that time what was the state of the soil what was the density what was the effective stress at that time so at a given effective stress level looser soils are more susceptible to liquefaction as, than the dense soil as i said if the soil are loose they will try to move much more to the denser configuration so there is much more movement involved in it so there is much more liquefaction similarly for a given density soils at high effective stresses are generally more susceptible to liquefaction than soil at low effective stresses so if a soil is showing high effective stress initially high effective stress means pore water pressure is initially very low so we can uh, we can get very high effective stress initially but since it is having high effective stress it doesn't mean that it will remain or it will maintain its high effective stress forever it can it can even the effective stress can reach to low effective stress just because of this increase in pore water pressure during ground shaking so that is also a risky condition and at constant confining pressure confining pressure means the pressure throughout all the boundaries uh, around the soil beneath the structure the liquefaction resistance increases with the relative density relative density is the density of a medium to the uh, density of water relative density is the ratio okay and at constant relative density soil liquefaction resistance increases with increasing confining pressure so they are almost similar lines one is the reciprocal of each other and the higher the initial shear stresses again here initially it's showing higher shear stresses but since it has got a potential to be liquefied so this promise which it is making initially can be broken how uh, when the soil will get liquefied so the greater is the liquefaction potential and a smaller disturbance is even sufficient to liquefy the soil so in the next video we will discuss surely what are the uh liquefaction zonation and uh, what are the effects of liquefaction and how to mitigate the soil liquefaction effects on the structure so till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you